Welcome back to Band Name with Doc Rock. I'm Doc Rock. We're here for the Rock and Roll Capital of Cleveland, Ohio, and the Minister of Cultures in the House, Michael Heaton. How are you tonight? What's up, man? Good to I'm see you good. again. Good to see you too, brother. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you're a Clevelander, you have to know Michael Heaton. And if you don't, tune us out, okay? You're in the wrong spot. This man is the Minister of Culture. Let me tell you a little bit about his illustrious career. Michael Heaton is an award-winning columnist and reporter. You know, his byline has appeared regularly in the Plain Dealer since 1987. You're an 80s kid, huh, aren't you? <laughs> Prior to that, he was a critic and columnist for the San Francisco Examiner and a reporter for People Magazine. He's a graduate of Kent State University, yeah, and he's co-author of the New York Times bestseller, Motherhood and Hollywood. You know, and his sister is actress Patricia Heaton. Um, of course, uh, and she's you know, also co-author of I'll Be Right Back, the autobiography of uh, TV host Mike Douglas. A lot of it before your time, I know, I know, but it's television history. You know, he's got a book of uh, collecting his plain dealer columns titled Best of the Minister of Culture. Everybody's read that one. And published in 1992. He's the son of legendary plain dealer sports writer Chuck Heaton. He lives in Bay Village. Absolutely. You know, and Michael Heaton has reported on a wide range of stories and, and is an active Cleveland journalist. On any given day, his byline might appear in any section of the, of the uh, newspaper of record. So, the plain dealer, of course, you know, he's a featured columnist and reporter. So, bands, you better look out for Michael Heaton. And, you know, to really get the story, he has to put on his boxing gloves and he enters the ring. You know, he's accompanied, you know, a heroin addict. You know, he while he's, while he's shoplifted, he's fenced stolen goods, uh, scored smack and shot up and driven in a demolition derby. Whoa, how is that for dangerous? All at the same time, the while same doing time. the smack. <laughs> Anything's possible, I guess. You know, he's interviewed chefs and coroners, prosecutors and perpetrators, gypsies and priests. And he delivers their stories with a sense of humor and uh, really a great sense of style. This collection of his best newspaper and magazine reporting shows uh, Heaton's uh, Cleveland to be a crazy quilt of bold schemes, failed dreams, and colorful characters, of which you really are one. My gosh. Okay, I'll take it. All right, so you went to Kent State University. Did you grow up in Cleveland? I did. I grew up in Bay Village. I'm back home where I grew up. Really? Yes. Okay, so kind of a full circle thing. Really? You know, I started in Bay Village. Okay. Then I went to Kent State. All right. Then uh, five years in New York at People Magazine. Okay. Then three years at the San Francisco Examiner. Wow. And then back here since 87, it's been 24 years 24 in Cleveland. 24 years here. in Cleveland. Well, we're glad to have you back. Okay, okay. thanks. Something. Good I hope to be you back. Paid by the mile. Could you show the book? I love it when you hold it up in front there. So well, the absolutely. See. We're going to show this book. This is, this, <laughs> this is one of my favorite books. Now, folks, this is Truth and Justice for Fun and Profit. How is that? Truth and justice for fun and profit. Love the cover shot. You know, it's, it's got that classic Michael Heaton bit of a suspect to it. So this man is not innocent. So great, great book. You know, Michael, but you know, is there any musical training in your background or anything? You've done all this journalism. You know, I did a lot of music. I came from San Francisco here yeah. to become the rock critic when the Rock Hall came to Cleveland. Okay. So that's what really drew me back. And... Um, I can't, you know, I only play the radio. That's, that's, a, that's the limit of my musical talent. But uh, I just always wanted to be near the scene like you. You okay. know what oh, I mean? Yeah. You love to be around it. Got to be, you know, near it. And since I have no musical talent, I wanted to write about it and uh, be close to it. And okay. so I was the rock critic here for probably about five years. All right. And then I went to the Sunday Magazine. And that book is mostly Sunday Magazine stories. Okay. So it's not all music. There's a little bit of music, but that's mostly like profiles and... Okay, now, yeah. but you know, you, you're, you're a great family man. Yes. And and I think some of your, your kids now are in their teens and late teens and stuff. Yes, okay, well, my, well, yeah, 18, 16, and 11. 18, 16, and 11. Now, is dad hip to them, or are you kind of no, you're no. Kind of old school? Yeah, no, no, yeah, they don't. Although, my kids, uh, my, uh, one of my daughters went to Reggae Fest this year. Okay. Because I, I took them to Reggae Fest over the years. Ah, so, right. you know, the, I think maybe they just don't want to admit it, but maybe sure, behind sure. my back, they, they, there might be a, a smidgen of admiration. <laughs> we grow older and we lose our dreadlocks. <laughs> it's true. Hey, you know what? What type of music do you personally enjoy today? Well, the big excitement for me today right. was to find out, uh, uh, to get a notice at my email, mm -hmm. Tom Waits is having a new album come out October 25th. Oh my gosh. And he sent out the funniest. Today was like a private listing day if yeah, you yeah. are a member of TomWaits.com. Uh -huh. And he had the funniest uh, sort of like commercial intro. 
about his private listening party. And um, I had the biggest thrill this year. I went to New York and went to the uh, inductions oh, did in you? New okay. York okay. at the Waldorf Astoria, and I got to see Tom Waits inducted. And great. For those of you who don't know Tom Waits, you know, he is a great character. Yes. Pianist and songwriter. I mean, really, if you are a serious songwriter, you got to check out Tom Waits. He's in that league with, like, Randy Newman. And Absolutely. You know, of that whole uh, uh, Dr. John. Dr. John. You know, Dr. John was yeah. inducted with him yeah, this year. all the classics. I mean, those guys really, really deliver the, the character of a song so well. So that's great. So, yeah, so this is my, a big, exciting day for me to know that uh, Tom Waits, was, is the, the new album is near. It's a month away. Oh, my gosh. So, so okay, so, Michael, let's go back. You, you, you go to Kent State. Yeah. I assume you studied journalism. I did. Okay. So certainly not, not fashion at Kent State or anything. Okay. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you do journalism and, uh, and stuff. And how did you, you know, did you start out, you know, kind of considering yourself, you know, the typical journalist and all? and succumbing to you know, the deadline I really pressures. Did everyth I really did everything backwards. Normally, in a journalism career, you start at a small newspaper, and then you kind of move up maybe to a larger one. Then you go to a bigger city, sure. and you know, you, you know, you, so you go that way. My very first job was at People Magazine out of Kent State. <laughs> okay. So I go right to New York City and start working for People. Wow. And then San Francisco was a smaller paper, mm -hmm. and then Cleveland is, you know, I mean, you would think I would start in Cleveland, San Francisco, and finish in New York. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, yeah. there's no real plan. You know what I mean? You just go with what, what happens. Well, the wind blows. You know? Yeah. Yep, yep, you're feeling all that stuff. Well, you've seen so many things, and you've been on the cutting edge of so many things. You know, I'm kind of curious. You are the Minister of Culture. How would you define culture? Well, you know, i got to tell you the story behind where I got that name. When I was living in San Francisco, there was a radio guy named Mike Snyder, and he would review... Uh, Kung Fu movies and monster movies on the radio. <laughs> and as a joke, he called himself the Minister of Culture. Uh -huh, so, see. Okay. you know, since you can't, um, you can't uh, own a title, a name, right. or something like that, right. I stole it from him when okay. I came here. <laughs> and it was really just kind of as a joke, you know, sure, because I was sure. really going to be, you know, I'm covering rock and roll, so I sure. thought Minister of Culture is a, sure. fun, is a well, funny Well, you can have Minister of Pop Culture, because in essence, exactly. is, but I'm just, but you know, so we use the terms so often, and, you know, and yeah. you, you've seen so much... Again, how would you define culture? Culture to me is uh, what I write about books, movies, television, uh, all of that combined. And I, every week I try to mix it up, like not music every week, maybe sure. movies. Okay, the greatest movie that I'm recommending in Cleveland, I think it's only going to be there until next Friday, yes. Tree of Life. Tree of Life. Terrence yeah. Malick. Okay. It's wild. Is it really? Yeah, people wow. love it or hate it. Okay. In the first 20 minutes, half the audience leaves. Because they're so freaked out by it. Really? Yeah. Really? The guy who sells the popcorn at the Cedar <laughs> Lee, he waits. And he goes, 20 minutes, <laughs> bang, the door opens, people come out, they're like, I hated it, I want my money back, you know? And then, of the remaining people, when the movie's over, they come out, love it, hate it, love it, hate it. I loved it. Okay. It's amazing. Sure. It'll it'll blow your mind but up. But this is the point. <coughs> Excuse this, me. This is the very, the very thing, Michael. You know, yeah. all of these things, books, movies... Television, you know, television, all of these things that are surrounding us you yes. know, are, uh, are are somewhat media creation. Yes, but they're in, you know they're they're all they're they're so invasive in our life, mm -hmm. and they're creating kind of who we are. Are we fighting? Absolutely, we they inform everything about a person. Okay, so so the thing is with that, it's, you know, the, the culture reflects the times, or, the, or or does the times generate the culture? I think it works both ways. I think it's a it's a two way street. Okay, and. Um, you know, you were talking about my sister earlier. Yeah, sure, Patricia. No, she has a new show. You know, most people know her from Everybody Loves Raymond. Sure, right. That was on nine years. Great she show. won two Emmys for that. Yep. She has a new show now. It's in her. Th it's in its third season. It's called The Middle. Okay. It's on ABC. Okay. It's on eight o'clock. Okay. And um, a very funny half-hour sitcom. Hilarious. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, you you've been through so many almost sitcom-like things yourself. <laughs> and what was it I heard? I heard about this incredible uh, be, uh, situation you had with 9-11. Mm -hmm. We're going, you know, we're going, what, into the 10th the year tenth of 9-11. 10th anniversary of 9-11. And somebody was telling me that uh, you had an amazing experience as a journalist in New York with 9-11. Yeah. Can you share us the short version of what okay, happened? Okay, well, basically, said? on the day of 9-11, I was downtown Cleveland, and an editor came up to me, dropped car keys on my desk, and said... Go to Manhattan, get to Ground Zero, tell us what's going on there. And the bridges and tunnels were closed, and there was like no way to get in. There was no, all the airports were shut, were shut down. The airspace was closed across the country. 
And I don't want to give it all away because I have a very big piece coming up in the Plain Dealer on 9-11. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Where I it. tell the whole thing. And um, I, I, I made it into ground zero within three days of leaving Cleveland. Really? Yeah. No other journalist could even get close to it. Well, there were a couple others. I was one of a small group. <laughs> So you won't give away how you did it. We have to see it. Then, uh, yes, it'll all, yes, all will be revealed on the 10th anniversary in the Plain Dealer, really? which is a Sunday. Okay, uh, okay, on the Sunday. Wow, that's right this year. This is a Sunday. It's coming up. That's In fact, amazing. I was just working on it today, the it, piece that it, I'm writing. Really? Yeah. Incredible, incredible.